Oh, I'm sorry. You want tri-tip for dinner? You know, I do know a little bit about tri-tip. First time I ever cooked tri-tip was the Sam's Club Barbecue Invitational Championship, and I won first place. So, let's go check one out. Let's cook a tri-tip. Teach you guys exactly how to do it. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this tri-tip. Okay, so what we have here is a beautiful choice tri-tip that I picked up from Creekstone Farms. Uh, now, the tri-tip is the lower triangular portion of the sirloin steak from the beef. Okay, so what we have, you can see the three points. That's why they call it a tri-tip. It's a really well-marbled piece of meat. And the way we're going to cook this is we're going to take our grill and we're going to set it for offset cooking. Now, I'm gonna, I've got this great big pile of charcoal here. I'm going to light it up. I'm going to get it really super hot. And I'm going to sear this thing two to three minutes each side. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to set it and I'm going to cook it offset until it reaches medium rare. Once it reaches medium rare, I'm gonna take it off the grill and I'm gonna cook this thing, or I'm gonna let this thing rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once it's rested for 15 to 20 minutes, all the rendered fats within the meat that we have here are going to meld into the meat and we're gonna have ourselves a really beautiful piece of steak. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop the cryo back on this thing and see what we got here. All right, so like I've said you guys, like I've told you guys before, when you age a piece of meat, when you wet age a piece of meat, you get a really nice flavor when you pop that cryo back. Now this thing's been wet aging for about 30 days and you can see it's nice and soft and malleable. All the juice is piled up on the bottom of that cryo back there. So we're just gonna dry that off. We're gonna set this off to the side. Oop, and I just knocked over my beer. Party foul, no party. Not a big deal. All right, so. You see here, we got a really beautiful piece of meat. Now, every now and then, you're going to get a butcher with a heavy hand that's going to do that. Doesn't matter. Makes no difference at all. All right, so what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and, and just trim off the silver skin. Like I've said in all my videos before, the reason we trim off the silver skin is because we want to make sure the rub gets to the actual meat itself and it doesn't stick on the silver skin, the part that you're going to actually not eat. Okay, so we'll just get your knife up under there. Pull that off. And when you're chewing on a piece of steak and you get that one piece of meat that you can't actually chew through, it's god awful, you're just chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing. That's a silver skin, that's just this stuff here. Your rub's not gonna penetrate it, it's gonna wind up just being a wasted little bit of little bit of meat there so we want to get all that off okay and like i said we're going to sear this thing hot and fast so we don't want to rip off all the we don't want to dig into the meat we just want to cut off the external stuff okay pretty good here this is a nice looking piece of tri-tip so we just want to just get rid of the fat on the top I don't want to dig too deep into it. We're going to leave that on there because that's going to be a nice rendered piece of fat. It's a big old piece of silver skin here. We're going to get rid of that too. Now, tri-tip, if you guys out on the West Coast, tri-tip is big out on the West Coast. For the guys on the Central U.S., Eastern, it's not really that big yet, but it is becoming big. A lot of the chefs are really starting to discover this piece of meat because it's a well-marbled piece of meat. And when it's cooked well, it really gives an amazing flavor. It's just an all-around good piece of meat. All right, so let's take this big old chunk of fat off here. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Let's take this, let's take this piece off right in the middle of the two points here. take that off and that should just be about all we want to do now this is this like I said this is a choice piece of meat you can get the prime Wagyu if you can afford it because man that you doesn't get any better than that and it's just a really good all-around cut of meat all right see that's looking really nice so let's get rid of our fat all right so now for seasoning like I've always said taste is subjective and whatever you guys like to season with there's nothing wrong with it. If you make your own seasoning, that's fine. If you buy a seasoning, that's fine. 
I gave up on making my own seasoning a long time ago because I found out it's a lot easier, a lot cheaper to buy a good quality seasoning than it is to actually try to make your own. And here comes the smoke. Woohoo! We're cooking now. All right, so this evening what I'm using is I'm using some seasonings from a friend of mine that I met on the competition barbecue circuit, Rod Gray. I've got his Eat Barbecue Zero to Hero and I've got his Eat Barbecue, the most powerful stuff. Both of these really great seasonings. And then we're also gonna top, we're gonna hit it with some uh, double strength garlic pepper. I like double strength garlic pepper, which is really good for, for beef. All right, so let's move out of the smoke here for a second so we can see what's going on. All right, so we're gonna hit this thing really nice here. Okay, pat that down, let's flip it over. Hit the back side. Okay, now we're gonna start with the Zero to Hero. Some really good stuff right here. Okay, push that into the meat just a little bit. And then we're gonna use the most powerful stuff. All right, there we go. Looking good. All right, let's flip that thing over. Do the same thing again. All right, so our grill is gonna be ready to go in about 15 minutes. So once this thing is ready to go, like I said, we're gonna fire this thing offset. We're gonna put the we're gonna put the tri-tip directly over the coals, and we're gonna season that for, or we're gonna cook it for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Not 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna cook that thing for about three to five minutes. <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes this is gonna be burnt. So we're gonna cook it three to five minutes and then we're gonna cook it offset until it gets to medium rare. Okay, now this is something you guys can do on your gas grills as well. On your gas grills, it's even easier. You don't have to worry about, you know, firing up your charcoal, getting it all hot. You just turn that gas grill on, get that, get one offset side as hot as you can possibly get. And when it's ready to go, you just sear it. You know, three to five minutes and then cook it offset you want it like one and a half to two minutes on each side so you're doing three to five minutes total and then once uh once you've seared it you cook it offset to medium rare and you've got yourself a beautiful piece of meat okay so our our coals are going to take a few minutes to get ready here once they're ready um we're going to fire that we're going to come back and we're going to fire this thing up and we'll start cooking it all right so our grill is all ready to go we are at 475 degrees so i'm going to go ahead and open this thing up and let's take our piece of meat. It's looking really nice. Rub's all set in, and I'm gonna put this directly over the coals. And we're gonna sear this for about a minute and a half to two minutes on each side. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna caramelize all the fats and everything on top of the grill, on top of the meat. And it's gonna give us a really beautiful color on each side of the meat. And once that, uh, once it gets all nice and caramelized, we're gonna cook it offset, like I said before. I'm gonna cook this thing offset, and it's gonna give us just a beautiful, medium rare piece of meat that is gonna just be super flavorful. So as you can see, we're at about a minute. So I like to grab my tongs, take a peek under there. Oh yeah, you can see where it's starting to look really nice. All right, so we're gonna let it go a little bit longer here. You wanna make sure you've got your coals really nice and hot, or if you're cooking this on gas, you wanna make sure that the, the gas portion that you're cooking on is as hot as you can possibly get it because we're looking for a sear, we're not looking for a cook. It's a big difference. So you wanna make sure that sear is nice and solid. And you've got, ah, there we go. See, now we're starting to get some nice color on the back. Ooh, and that smells good right about now. All right, so we're about a minute and a half, so let's go ahead and flip this thing over. And you can see we got a nice sear. We're not cooking, we're just searing. While that's searing, we grab our beer in. Because we knocked one over, hey, we can, we can fix that. 
You can always come in here and you can take a peek at what you got. It's some nice seared little fat chunks. And ooh, that is some good flavor. You just want to pay attention to where you're at. So right now we are at two minutes, which is a minute or just over a minute on each side. A little bit longer on this back side. We want about another 30 seconds. Once we reach our desired cook temp or desired sear, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing off so you can see the juices start to pop out of this thing. It's nice. I'm happy with that. This is a nice piece of meat. See, just need a little bit more. That is really, really hot. So we're gonna back up just a little bit there. All right. All right, so you can see we've got a nice sear on both sides. And we're at about a minute and a half on each side. So I'm just gonna let this sit for another couple seconds here. We don't wanna burn it. What we really want is just a good sear. Like I said, and what the sear is doing is it's locking in the juices, it's locking in the flavors. Looking good. And you can see what the, what the burn marks are is that's the, that's the sugars in the rub that are caramelizing into it. Let's take a look at that side. So see, we're looking really good. I'm gonna flip it back over there. Give just another second on the back side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this thing off and I'm gonna set it over here. We're gonna make sure this thing is cooking offset and I'm gonna cook it till about 125 degrees internal temp. And what that's gonna give me is a nice medium rare piece of meat. It's gonna render all the fat that's in this thing and it's gonna have a, we're gonna have a nice juicy piece of meat. All right, so we are about as seared as we want. Move this thing offset. We're gonna close this up. And we're gonna make sure it doesn't over temp. We don't want it much more than about 400 degrees because we're gonna be offset. And we're gonna come back, we're gonna revisit this thing when it's done, which should be about eh, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so we'll see you back then. All right, so let's have a look at what we got here. So this thing's starting to look really nice. Got some good color on this, and right now we are at 138, 39 degrees. All right, so we're at a nice medium rare right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing off. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this thing rest. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this thing in tin foil. I'm gonna let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. And once it's done resting, I'm going to go ahead and slice the thing up and we'll see what we got. So let's flip this thing over so we can take another nice look at it. See, it looks really nice. All right. So I'm going to wrap this thing up and we'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap on what we did here. All right. So we got our, we got our tri-tip. We wet aged it for 30 days. We set up our cooker for offset cooking. Uh, we put all the coals off to one side. We seared this thing. Um, really hot, 400, uh, 450 to 500 degrees for about a minute and a half to two minutes each side. And then we cooked it offset until it was medium rare, about 120 to 130 degrees. We overshot by a little bit, but hey, no big deal. All right, so then we wrapped it and we've let it rest for about 15 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. If you've got, if you've got the ability to rest a little bit longer, that's fine too. But my wife, my dog, everybody's looking for dinner. So we're gonna go ahead and rush this a little bit. So let's unwrap this thing and slice it up and show you guys what we're looking at. Okay, so you can see the juice just running out of this thing. This looks really good right now. I'm gonna go ahead and move this thing out of the foil. You can see it looks awesome. The smell is just incredible. So let's go ahead and take it. And you can see the grain kind of runs this way and this way. So what you wanna do is I like to take, I like to start in the center and I'm just gonna take a nice little slice here. I'm gonna look at that and you can see it cooked a little bit more. This thing is about medium, medium to medium rare, but look at that. That is just a beautiful piece of meat, nicely cooked. The flavor is incredible. Mm, that's nice. So when you're serving this stuff, what you can do is you're just gonna take some nice slices. Cut this thing up real nice. And there you have it. That's a nice medium pieces, piece of tri-tip. So anytime you guys wanna check it out, 
Tri-tip is a great piece of meat. It's an easy cook, real fast, and all of your guests will really enjoy it. So there you have it. There's Tri-tip, guys. Until next time, keep on smoking it.